Hi, I'm Nate Bronner with the Virginia Cooperative Extension, the Master Naturalist Program, and the Colonial Beekeepers Association. And I'd like to welcome you back to my garden. Today I'd like to talk to you about the pretty amazing honeybee. But I'd like to give a special shout out to all the students at Dare Elementary, the Dare Dolphins, and welcome you back to learning a little bit more about honeybees. Honeybees are fantastic creatures. In addition to pollinating, almost 80% of the crops that we eat in our, in our country, they do a lot of other things for us. They're fantastic pollinators in and around our garden, and they're wonderful makers of a, an incredible substance that you probably love called honey. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how they do that and what the bees do inside of their hives here. I have two of my hives here, and I'd like to take you over the course of this discussion into the hives and show you different aspects of it. Now you can see each one of these hives has a different number of boxes. Gryffindor here has three boxes and Slytherin here has two boxes. Those boxes contain frames. Here's an example of a box that is in my hives and you'll see that each box in my hives has eight frames in it and this is what a frame looks like. When I first give the bees this frame, it has a little bit of a starter strip of wax up at the top, and then they build all of the honeycomb off of that. The only reason why I give them this is because I want them to learn to build the wax in one direction. If I didn't give it to them, they'd just build it whichever way that they want. If I can help them know the direction that I want them to build the wax, by giving them a little starter strip. And this way, I can take these frames in and out and inspect the frames and see how they're doing in the hive. Once I'm done with it, I can put it back into the hive. It wasn't always like that. Over our 160 years ago, beekeepers used to keep bees very differently. They'd keep them in a pot or a skep, and it would be a big mounded structure. And at the end of the season, they would break it open they crushed down all the honeycomb to get the honey out of it, and it would destroy their home. These days, we're a little bit more careful of the bees, and that's why we keep them in hives like this, so we don't damage the bees when we go in there and take care of them. And even when I take some honey out of the hive, I'm not going to hurt the bees when I do that. It's really important to me because, you know, one of the wonderful things about bees is that they are one of the very few organisms in the world, that means living creature in the world, that in the normal course of its life does not harm another living thing. That's kind of an extraordinary statement. Even if you think about something that you view as very nice and docile like a bunny rabbit, very cuddly and nice, but if a bunny rabbit got into my garden, it would destroy the carrots and the spinach and the other thing, other plants in my garden. Honeybees don't do that. All they do is go around and help the plants by moving nectar or moving pollen from plant to plant and in the process they drink the nectar that the plants make to bring them in. They're only helping the plants. Now many of you probably think, yeah but honeybees can sting me. And that is true. Sometimes honeybees do sting people uh, but it's usually as a defensive reaction. You might be batting at them like this and they might think, oh they're trying to attack me. I better protect myself. And so they might sting you then. But they won't go out of their way to sting you because if they sting you, they'll die. They have an incentive not to want to sting you. It's not like yellow jackets or wasps that can sting you and live again. Honeybees won't survive that encounter, but they'll do it to protect their hive and they'll do it to protect themselves. If you notice right now, these honeybees are pretty busy. They're going to and fro going out to find nectar and pollen to bring back and feed to the babies and to the queen in the hive. And they're going, they're so busy when they do that, they don't have time to mess with me back here. As long as I'm not threatening them, they don't want to have anything to do with me. It's pretty amazing that I can be this close to them and they're not even worried about it. When they leave the hive and go out to the flowers, they will go, fly up to three miles away from the hive. That's amazing considering the size of the bee. Think about it. That would be like you running up to Richmond and back to get food. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? 
you'd be pretty tired if you did that. But they, these worker bees will do that several times a day. And every time they leave the hive to fly up to three miles away from it, they will visit 50 to 100 flowers in that flight. And they will gather all the nectar and the pollen that they can, and they'll bring it back to the hive to store in the hive. And they'll work with the nurse bees that stay in the hive to take that nectar and slowly turn it into honey and take that pollen and put it into the cells to feed to the babies and to the queen. You see, because that pollen provides them the protein that they need, and the nectar, once they turn it into honey, that provides them the carbohydrates that they need. So they can use all of that different parts of the flower that the flower provides to them to feed to their hive. I'd like to take you into a couple of my different hives and show you different parts of them. So why don't we go and do that? Here's an example of some fresh honeycomb. These bees have just drawn out and made all of this fresh honeycomb. If you'll tilt the bottom of the uh, frame towards me, you'll see how nice and almost white this honeycomb is. And it's all the same size. Do you realize that the bees do all of this work in the dark without any rulers or any way to measure it? And they do all of it the same size every time. If we turn this around, you'll see on the other side, they're using some of this honeycomb to put away some honey on it. And up here at the top, you can see this white area right here, that is capped honey. That they have filled up with honey and then put a wax cap on top of it to protect it. That honey will never go bad. They've taken honey out of the Jamestown settlement. That's still good. They've even taken it out of Egyptian tombs that are still good. Pretty amazing what these bees can do all by themselves in the dark. This is a great example of a frame that has lots of baby bees on it in the bottom and center. You can see all of these cells right here are covered. Those are larvae that are between 9 and 21 days old that are metamorphosizing as pupa and are developing into adult bees. That's kind of like a caterpillar spinning its cocoon and going into a chrysalis as it becomes a butterfly. Bees do a very similar thing by covering the cell, then the Larva spins its cocoon and it metamorphosizes into a, an adult worker bee. And you can see that all over right here. Right up here, you can see the yellow down deep in the cells. That's all pollen that they have brought back. And then up here at the top of the frame, you can see cells that are covered up. And this is honey that has been stored and has been finished off and then covered by the worker bees all on one big cell, they work in the dark. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful of, example of a frame that the bees have not only drawn out all of their own honeycomb, but they have different baby bees or larvae at different stages of development. Let me show you. If we go in here on this part of the cell, down in the individual cells, you might be able to see some small things that look like um, curled up white worms. Those are baby larvae, baby bees in there. You might even be able to see in the bottom left hand side of your screen some small little grains of rice at the bottom of the cell. Those are eggs. Over here the larvae get a little bit bigger and you can see them starting to fill up the entire cell until they get so big that they're ready to start metamorphosizing or spinning their cocoons. Once they get to that point, the nurse bees will cap off the cell with some wax and they will metamorphosize into adult worker bees. It's just like the process that butterflies use. When the caterpillar gets so big that it's ready to spin its cocoon, make a chrysalis, and develop into a full-grown butterfly. And that's what a full frame of bees looks like. All the nurse bees running around to take care of the baby bees in the nursery. In the very corner. Get in there, 
Jim. Here you can see the queen moving around and you can see that blue dot on her so it's easier to see her. This frame is a great example of the nectar that the bees brought back to turn into honey. If you see when we turn it in the sun, it all glistens in the sun. Can you see all of it glistening inside of the cells? That's nectar that the bees brought back. And then they take some of the water out of it and make sure that it's all ready to go. Once they've taken enough water content out of the nectar, it turns into honey. And you can see right up here at the top where they have capped it off, those cells are all done. They've reduced the amount of water content and that nectar is now honey. It's a whole frame full of it, and that's going to taste great. Sometimes we take the queen out of the hive to mark her. I've put the queen in here, and you can see the queen right in there as she starts to come out. I'm going to lower her into the hive, and now she is right down on the hive going back to her workers. So now all we're going to do is I'm going to put the inner cover right back on top and I'm going to take my outer cover and put it on top of that and here they are all nice and snug thanks for joining me again in my garden to learn a little bit more about the honeybee if you have any questions please enter them in the comment section below I'll make sure I answer them if you're a dare dolphin and you'd like to learn a little bit more and you have a question please send it to your teacher and they'll get you an answer from me I'd like to end this with a little bit of a slow motion look at the bees entering and leaving the hive so you can see just exactly how amazing it is when they are all clustering around like this and orienting and coming back into land. It's a pretty neat thing to see. Thanks for joining me again in my garden.